It had been the best summer of her life, but also the worst. She had lost so much, but she had found courage. And for the first time, she felt like she had a future. It was time to leave the past behind. She decided to look at the photos one last time. The old woman in the next seat leaned in. Crystal paused for a moment. Did she really know these people? Or was she just making it up on the spot? What if she had answered differently? Would her memories of them change? She tried not to think about it. After all, it was natural for her mind to be scattered, considering what she had been through. The final photograph was the one of her and the boy. Crystal hesitated. She didn't know what to say. He was the reason she had made it this far, but then... Just the thought of it made her nauseous. Then something even more horrible dawned on her. When she saw the eagle, her blood ran cold. A million thoughts rushed through her head. How could she have been so stupid to think she'd just get on a train and get away? She was naive, and now reality caught up with her. This time, she had nowhere to run. After all, she was still the frail little girl she had always been. And he was much too strong. Maybe he was right, Crystal thought. Maybe she did deserve this, but did it really have to end this way? Funny, maybe but thrilling and exciting was a bit of an exaggeration. In fact, the circus had fallen far since its golden days. Over the last couple of years, many performers had left. But who could blame them? After all, they joined the circus expecting adventure. When they learned that the ringmaster refused to travel, they eventually got bored and moved on with their lives. The only performers left were those who had nowhere else to go. 
The circus was their safe haven. It didn't matter to them that the show was dull. They just wanted to escape the real world. Crystal wasn't one of the performers, but she still couldn't leave the circus. If anything, she felt like a prisoner. Sure, the circus was safe, but it was also deadly monotonous. She was tired of hiding from the rest of the world. When would it be her turn for some adventure? Sun touched her skin. She had been blindsided by summer. It was as if Mother Nature had fallen asleep on the job, only to wake up and fast forward several months overnight. For a moment, nothing else mattered. The voice was like a cloud intercepting the rays of light. Then she saw the boy. Crystal knew that opportunities like this don't grow on trees. Maybe this was her only chance to leave the circus. The boy snapped a photo and put it in his pocket. They said their goodbyes for now. Crystal was happy about meeting the boy. But could she really run off with him? It's not like the others would mind. They probably wouldn't even notice she was gone until they ran out of clean underwear. But she still owed the ringmaster a big one. She decided to give the circus one last chance. Her mind would be made up by the morning. It was time for dinner. She could smell the stew from the caravan. The only thing inside the ticket booth was the footstool the ringmaster used to reach over the counter. That, and a tip jar with two popsicle sticks and a lonely shirt button. fortune-telling machine was old. While it did have a coin slot, Crystal had discovered it could also be started with a well-placed slap. Crystal gave it a whack. It always said the same thing. Crystal figured the ringmaster had programmed it. Crystal shivered when she looked at the giant teddy bear. 
It was supposed to be an obtainable price back when they had games at the circus, but that was a scam. Now it just stood there, staring at her in the night. The door to the stables was locked. Crystal wasn't allowed to enter without supervision. The large ball used to be part of the tamer's performance. But since the tamer left and the lion was released into the wild, the ringmaster forced the cat to balance on top of the ball instead. Crystal almost fitted it. Crystal stared at the daredevil's dusty cannon. He had left the circus to become an accountant. Numbers were more thrilling, he said. Crystal wouldn't know. She never learned math. The clown, a man in his best years, he was juggling, dancing and telling jokes all day long. He could put a smile on anyone. Crystal admired him. The clown was busy. It seemed only food could take his mind off juggling. The tall lady's cat was tormenting a pigeon. It hissed when Crystal came close. It wouldn't let her pass. She would need something to shoo it away with. Obviously, the cat couldn't speak. But if it could, it would probably have said something like...
When the cat was gone, the bird chirped. Everyone knows birds can't speak either, but Crystal imagined it had something to say. Crystal couldn't decipher the name on the envelope. She would have to ask around to find its recipient. The ringmaster was in a wild argument with a large officer. This was the sheriff. His presence meant trouble for the circus. He was a disciple of the eagle, the tyrant who ruled the country. Their affiliation was official by the emblem he carried on his chest. Before Crystal came close enough to hear their conversation, the ringmaster slammed the door in the sheriff's face. The sheriff pushed Crystal aside and left the circus. It hadn't rained for weeks. There wasn't a single drop of water at the bottom of the well. The goose had moved into the circus the same day as Crystal arrived. It was probably just a coincidence. What did fill Crystal with wonder, however, was how it got there, because she had never seen it fly. Most of the time, it just sat on the roof and gazed out over the horizon. Crystal imagined it was missing its family. Crystal remembered when these posters were made. It was back in the day when twice as many performers lived in the circus. Among others, the painted picture showed the tamer, the mechanic, the twin line dancers and the daredevil. She used to get along well with these people. They were all so kind to her when she arrived at the circus. But now they were gone. And every day Crystal asked herself what she was still doing at the circus. Crystal was not too fond of how she looked in the mirror. All she could see was her flaws, so she'd rather not look at all. This was the bear woman. She was the most recent addition to the circus crew. Why she chose to join the circus at the time when most of the performers were quitting remained a mystery to Crystal. She was taciturn and had a habit of sleeping during the day. Even when awake, she didn't say much. Crystal knew absolutely nothing about her. Honey, the edible gold. The others wouldn't be happy if she took it all for herself. It took a lot of willpower. But Crystal managed to keep her paws off the jar. A sturdy bowl, great for serving hot stew. The stew smelled delicious, but if she wanted some, she would need a bowl.
Crystal filled the bowl with stew, but this serving was not for her. The stove was warm and cozy. In the winter, she could sit and stare into the fire for hours. When she looked deep into the flames, everything else became dark. It allowed her to escape the circus, if only for just a moment. The well-dressed lanky woman was prima donna Luciana Valentina Scorticini. Crystal called her the tall lady for simplicity. She used to be a famous opera singer, or at least so she claimed. But she had left that life behind when she joined the circus. When the ringmaster brought Crystal to the circus, the tall lady protested. Crystal never really understood why, but it was clear that the tall lady hated her guts. The tall lady had little respect for others. But Crystal knew better than to let a pretentious celebrity make her lose composure. Crystal figured it must be lonely to think you're on top of the world. So she secretly pitied the tall lady and remained polite. Crystal had no choice but to comply. It was her job to serve the circus performers after all. But where would she find water? They were regular juggling pins. Crystal had no reason to take them.
Crystal felt remorse over beating up the cat earlier, but she wasn't in the mood to go looking for it. Finding the recipient to the letter seemed like a more important task. After that, she could search for the cat if it was still missing. Crystal found it odd that the old generator was always running, despite the circus using very little electricity. The pylon was rusty and looked like it could collapse at any moment. Someone had just been in there and it smelled awful. The girl in the back was stronger. She was bold, cheerful and athletic. Let's just say Crystal admired Stronger. Perhaps her admiration was a bit excessive, because it made her stutter and lose words around Stronger. Which was ironic, since all she wanted was for Stronger to like her. Better be a stranger than a fool, Crystal thought, and kept her distance. But it made her miserable. Crystal had nothing to say to Strong Girl, but maybe the letter was hers.
Crystal reached out to hand over the letter, but she fumbled and dropped it. The letter was lying on the ground in front of them, but the next moment the wind grabbed hold of it and pushed it in under the tool shed door. There was no reason to panic. Crystal calmly walked over to the shed. But the door wouldn't budge. It was locked. So, after a series of unfortunate events, the ladder was behind the locked tool shed door and the clown had been served the key for dinner. Crystal felt responsible to sort out this mess. So the key was gone. Crystal's stomach turned upside down just thinking about having to tell Strong Girl the bad news. But perhaps she didn't have to. It was getting late, and she still had to find the tall lady's cat before she could call it a day. The door to the stables was locked. Crystal inserted the shirt button into the coin slot. Surprisingly, it fit perfectly and the fortune-telling machine came alive.
The merry-go-round had reminded Crystal of the mechanic who used to live at the circus. The two of them got along well, and the mechanic used to let Crystal ride the merry-go-round after the circus had closed for the day. Now the big chunk of metal just stood there as a monument of what the circus used to be. The strong girl was leaning over the bare woman as Crystal entered the caravan. Crystal climbed into bed, but she still had a thousand questions. So much had happened today, her head was spinning. She was anxious and felt lonelier than ever because despite being surrounded by people, she had no one to talk to. Then she thought of the boy and how sweet he was. He noticed her. He understood her. He wanted to help her. He offered that human connection she was longing for. If she left with him, she wouldn't have to worry about the sheriff, the key or anything. The thought of running away gave Crystal a moment of relief and she soon fell into slumber. Crystal woke up by a gentle knocking. She scratched her eyes and saw the boy smiling on the other side of the window.
They did look delicious, though, so she took a nibble. Suddenly, the room started growing. Crystal screamed, but her voice was so feeble no one heard her. She realized it wasn't the room which expanded. It was she who had shrunk. Then everything began shrinking again, and she realized it was only a moment until she would return to normal size. She hurried past the bear woman while she was small enough to go unnoticed. By the time she exited the caravan, she returned to regular size.
The boy was wrong. The giant teddy bear did swallow him whole. The boy knew exactly what to do. He took Crystal's hand and showed the way. She could see everything from above, and nothing was in her way. This, this was freedom, and it was exactly what she had always dreamt of. She was so happy. If there was ever a time to burst into song as if she were in a musical, this was it. But her singing voice was terrible, and she'd rather not ruin the moment. Instead, she waved at a passing flock of geese, and they greeted her back with a The bear woman was having breakfast. Or Crystal wasn't sure it could be called breakfast when she was also getting ready for bed. Crystal had no good reason to bother the bear woman.
There was nothing Crystal needed from the storage area. She was leaving with the boy. The boy had convinced Crystal to get the ringmaster's car keys. The only catch was that the ringmaster mustn't find out. Which was easier said than done. But at least these keys weren't inside someone's stomach. The car keys were inside the apartment, so Crystal had no choice but to get rid of the sheriff first. But how? She thought long and hard. She had been stung by a wasp. She looked around and saw a whole swarm. Maybe she could use that somehow. Honey, the edible gold, the others wouldn't be happy if she took it all for herself. But this was for someone else. Crystal stealthily smeared Honey on the sheriff's back and took a step back to hide. As expected, the wasps gathered around the sheriff.
The car keys were lying on top of the desk, but it was a bad idea to try to grab the keys while the ringmaster was watching. Crystal mounted the screwdriver onto the radio as an antenna. It was not a bad idea, but the radio was still dead. Crystal couldn't read the titles on the covers, but the colorful binders caught her attention. Crystal had no idea what hat richer was, but she was too embarrassed to admit that she was illiterate, so she just nodded. The ringmaster inventoried his library. It was a bowl of sewing thread. Crystal found it strange that the ringmaster was into sewing, but perhaps it was a good thing that he challenged gender stereotypes. Crystal stared at the junk on the floor. The ringmaster could use a woman in his life to keep the apartment clean, she thought. Then her adrenaline spiked. Why was it a woman's job to clean up his mess? The tiny man was the ringmaster. He was the owner of the circus and Crystal's boss. Like most people, Crystal didn't exactly worship her boss. But if she had to name one quality, it would be his stage voice. Only that it wasn't just his stage voice, it was also his normal voice. The way he emphasized certain words was great for building suspense. But in regular conversations, it sounded contrived, almost robotic. But even worse was that, after all these years, he still treated her like nothing but a cog in a machinery. Needless to say, he was not the ideal type of boss. Still, Crystal had much to be grateful for, so she put up with his many flaws.
Watchdog was what he called the bear woman. It was not a bad idea to check with her first, as it was her job to survey the circus at night. Crystal would rather not get dragged into this mess, but since the ringmaster wouldn't leave his apartment without the hat, she had no choice but to, if she wanted to grab the car keys in secret. So, while there was no proof, Crystal decided to start with interrogating the tall lady. She was usually in the stables this time of day. So Crystal had agreed to help the clown escape average-sized Beatrice. Apparently, friction was the biggest problem.
The box was sealed, but Crystal was too much of the curious kind not to open it. The inside appeared to be a delivery of electronic components, most likely intended for the mechanic who had left the circus some time ago, which would explain why it was unopened. Most of it was wires and micro-components. The only thing which seemed useful to Crystal was a 9-volt transistor battery. Crystal was not allowed to pat the horse without the tall lady's consent. It was an advertisement for the circus. It showcased the twin dancers who used to be part of the show. The twins' beauty made them popular among the male visitors, less so with the wives. While they were great dancers, they weren't exactly geniuses. One day Crystal found the twins staring at the box of orange juice. When she asked them what was going on, they explained that they were trying to concentrate because the juice box said so. The tall lady was the lead suspect in the missing hat investigation. But Crystal had to be smooth if she wanted to get her to confess the crime. The tall lady continued to make unintelligible noises. She appeared to be half asleep. Crystal figured that if she wanted answers, she would need to energize her. So before Crystal could interrogate the tall lady, she had to care for the horse. The tall lady had suggested it needed something to eat. Crystal replaced the old battery in the radio with a new one. With the screwdriver antenna and the new battery, the radio seemed to work. Crystal hesitantly tuned in to the Eagle broadcasting channel. The next program was just about to start.
Crystal got so upset, she punched the radio. If Crystal wanted the bread, she would need to distract the bear woman. Crystal had no good reason to bother the bear woman. If Crystal wanted the bread, Crystal greased the borehole, grabbed the clown around his neck and pulled as hard as she could. Whatever Crystal was planning, it wouldn't work.
The buzzing was almost deafening. Crystal imagined a diffused voice coming from the center of the swarm.
The letter seemed to be the only thing on Stronghold's mind. But Crystal was planning to be long gone before Stronghold discovered the key was inside the clown's stomach. Then Crystal remembered something. Crystal knew she would need a really good reason for the tall lady to hand over her last matchsticks. The large ball used to be part of the tamer's performance, but since the tamer left
They both pulled with all their strength, but it wasn't enough. Crystal thought long and hard. Then she had a flash of genius. The grease had reduced the friction to absolute zero and the detonation sent the clown flying with incredible force. He flew so far he ripped a hole in the tent ceiling and landed on the outside.
So while the tall lady had entered the ringmaster's apartment to leave a note, she claimed not to have touched the hat. Considering the nature of their conversation, Crystal had no reason to doubt the information the tall lady had given. Crystal felt a bit sympathetic, but she didn't have time to get involved in someone else's love drama. But why was the note covered in chocolate? Crystal's best lead now was interrogating the clown. Apparently, he too had left the caravan in the middle of the night. So the clown claimed to be innocent, and Crystal's next lead was to interrogate Strong Girl. Crystal had a feeling Strong Girl wouldn't talk unless she returned the letter first. Fortunately, the key was now out of the clown's stomach. Unfortunately, it was deep in the outhouse tank. But Crystal had a plan. It was a disgusting plan, but a plan nevertheless.
The poster was so old and worn down, Crystal couldn't tell what it used to depict. One side of the poster was loose, so she instinctively looked behind it. Something was written on the wall. While she couldn't read the words, she managed to decipher the numbers 5, 8, 2. It was a movie poster for a movie Crystal had not seen. In fact, she had never seen a single movie in her entire life. But she had heard stories about the moving screen and the people in them. Their lives were full of romance, adventure and action. And best of all, it always ended happily. A large battery. It seemed depleted and was probably useless. Crystal took a deep breath and leaned in. She almost barfed in her mouth when she saw the mountain of poo. It took a few attempts to get the key on the tooth hook, but eventually she managed to pull it up. As Crystal exited the outhouse, the house blocked itself from the inside. The box had a three-number combination lock on it. Crystal had entered the correct code and the lock opened. Inside the box was a handgun. Crystal carefully picked it up. It was best she didn't show it to anyone. Crystal picked up the scissors. They would probably come in handy. The ladder was surprisingly light, so Krista didn't mind carrying it with her.
So it turned out Strong Girl was not the thief. But her late night activities at least explained why the napkin note was covered in chocolate. It was time to confront the bear woman. Crystal noticed something moving in the corner of her eye. It looked like the bear woman's headpiece was dragging along the floor. It must be the cat, she figured. But it was moving so slowly. Was it sick? She turned around and saw that it was, in fact, the bear woman's headpiece on the floor. She lifted it from the ground, and a rat stared back at her under the headpiece. It squeaked loudly and ran off. Crystal was in shock. Why was the rat trying to get away with the bear woman's headpiece? The rat leaped towards the exit. But it got away again. At least this time, Crystal saw it jump down the well.
The pylon was rusty and looked like it could collapse. Crystal found it odd that the old Crystal found it Crystal found The large ball, but since Better a shilling in the hand than a pitchfork in the foot. That was something the tamer used to say and laugh. Crystal never understood the joke. Maybe it was only funny in the tamer's native language. Crystal missed the tamer. He used to play with her, and the way he scratched her behind her ear was out of this world. But then he became vegan. So he released the lion into the wild and took a job as a daycare teacher. Working with children was the ethical alternative to working with animals, he said. The pitchfork It was a simple pot made of ceramics. While ceramic was heavy and looked sturdy, she had been told it was in fact no more reliable than glass. For a moment she was happy that she was the girl of glass and not the girl of ceramic. The box was full of white. The clown had ripped a large hole in the tent roof.
The clown had ripped a large The flag was attached to a long, sturdy rope, but it was entangled at the top of the pole. It was a Gordian knot only a pair of scissors could sort out. Crystal climbed to the top and cut loose the rope. Even though the bad weather, she was spellbound by the view. From up there, she could see everything. The trees, the lakes, the mountains. Soon she would go to all these places with the boy. Her attention drifted away for a moment. She lost her grip and fell. This was the end, she thought. When she hit the ground, she would shatter into a million pieces. Crystal embraced the impact. The impact was soft. She had landed on the giant teddy bear and safely slided down to the ground. Crystal tied the rope to the top of the well and climbed down. Crystal touched the inside of the wall. There was a draft coming from a crack in the structure. She leaned against the wall thinking how she would solve this puzzle. Then the wall caved in by the pressure of her weight. The situation indeed looked grim for Crystal. Then a majestic creature leaped into the scene.
As the rats ran off into the shadows and Crystal picked up the ringmaster's hat, she noticed something else on the ground. It was a stack of documents. While she couldn't read the text, her curiosity was piqued by the butterfly emblem in the bottom right corner. Maybe someone could decipher it for her, but she had a feeling she had to be careful with whom she showed it to. The gates to the sewers were kept shut by a combination lock. Thank you.